Hey everyone, it's a pretty dreary day today, but I've got holidays off of work now, so what better time to make some progress on this. We had to wheel it out of the shop a few weeks back for Dad to work on his stuff, but he's been done with that for a while and I've got time off, so it's time to wheel it back in. In order to do that, I'm going to increase the preload on these coilovers in the back, because every time it sits for more than a minute, it is sitting with the fender, with the fenders on the wheels. So I just got to get my wrenches here and spend a little while torquing on that and then do that for the other side so that way I can actually move it around without needing four people. All right, so here's the line I needed. This end is what goes actually into the power steering rack, so that's the one I need to attach to the custom line that connects it to the new pump. I took that off of here, which was previously where that bolt was in the car. That was super annoying to remove. And of course there's, and of course there's plenty of fluid in everything still. And since we're not gonna be using this reservoir anymore as well, we're just gonna pull that out real quick. which leaves a couple more of the low pressure hoses that run up to the front. And we'll get all that unbolted and fish that all out as well. Uh, hang on a second. Hmm. I'm gonna hold a piece of wood up there. All right. That'll help. Uh, yeah. Ready? What's up? I just, I'm getting tired. Oh. Put some tap magic on there? Yeah, I did. I'll put some more on, but... Stop. Yep, that's through the metal. Oh, God, I could not have gone into a second. So as I'm sure you're aware, these batteries have cooling connections that need to receive cool water from somewhere. And that somewhere is through these holes we've just drilled in the chassis. Um, so those lead down. You can see the subframe through one of them. Um, here they're pretty close together, but they should clear just because I want to make sure that the tubing fits around these hoses or these uh, wires over here I've got the same thing for the other stack um, they're a little further apart because that blue hose there goes kind of right between them and each pair of holes feeds one of these battery stacks one supply one return on each side and those will fit these one inch cable glands that past the half inch silicone tubing just fine. Once you crank them down, they hold it nice and snug. All right, so there's the cable glands installed. And sure enough, the nuts up top fit without interfering with each other. So I should be able to tighten them down no problem. Around this uh, half inch silicone heater hose. Here they are from underneath. So they fit to either side of this three-quarter inch hose. And there's the other two feeding down. And then they'll all they'll all collect up into that plate that doesn't. They'll all collect up into this plate here and then go up to the front. Obviously the Mazda and Mitsubishi power steering systems were never really meant to connect like this, so I'm going to need a bit of custom tubing to make that happen. So I have here 
the end of the Mitsubishi's plumbing that connects into the high pressure inlet port of the power steering rack. Over here I have the connector that plugs into the high pressure output of the Mazda power steering pump. And then this piece of steel wire that we bent up is a model of the path that has to happen between the two. Um, so after I film this, I'm going to go to a couple of local hydraulics places and see if any of them can make me a line like this or do it with soft tubing or hard tubing or whatever. After shopping around to every hydraulic place in town, here's what I've got. So this end, they took the old Mazda banjo connection and soldered it onto a more standard sort of fitting that they can work with and then crimped that with this right angle thing onto a piece of hose. And then the hose over here, this is the old Mitsubishi part, again soldered onto a standard sort of fitting and this plugs into the power steering rack. And down here you can see the other line for the power steering pump's been hooked up. It's just a 3 8 I believe this is meant for transmission coolers, so it's oil resistant sort of line. We need to figure out how to still how to make a bead in the end of the low pressure output to get a good seal and keep it clamped nice and tight. But for now it fits on there all right, just for proving that it works. And that comes along the side of the battery box in parallel with the high pressure hose and will connect up to this pump. Um, still need to work on getting a piece to go from the reservoir to the top here. Uh, we have a stock one that has the right angle, but it's a little too short. So finding a replacement for that is going to be the next step in getting the hydraulic system working. I had to order another 50 foot spool of heater hose, but here's the top side with some of the uh, half inch tubing installed. I haven't cut this apart yet because this is just the earlier 25 foot section that I had threaded in, and that's just enough to do one side of this. So now I've got this 50 foot section that I should be able to easily complete the other side with, as well as make the jumpers between the different battery modules and some of the extra stuff up front that's not done yet. So the cover panel on the electronic section of this AC compressor is pretty beat up. So we figured we'd peel it off, straighten that out, and then put new sealant down. And look what's in there. The whole thing is potted inside this sort of like silicone goop stuff that remains goopy even now. But it's so clear. This is really cool. Um... You can kind of see how the CAN bus stuff hooks up there. They've scraped all the numbers off all the chips for whatever reason. And then there's the high voltage input there. And you can kind of see different like bus bars and stuff traveling around inside to the different sections. So that's what's in, that's what's in these, uh, I believe it's just like the Azure Dynamics compressor. So while air conditioning is still kind of a far future thing, we do want to make sure that it will be a thing at some point. So there's this bracket now under construction to hold the AC compressor in place. That way we make sure that we don't accidentally place something that would interfere with being able to put this in the car. Since it has quite a bit of volume and it needs to go near the AC line so we can make sure it gets hooked up and all that. Here's the complete AC compressor bracket. You can see there's been added an extra support here that reaches over to the side of the car so it doesn't do this number. So here's a little more detail about how that bolts on. It's pretty simple, just three bolts, and they each have these spacers in order to hold it onto this, onto the plane of this bracket. Here's the AC compressor bolted in with the finished bracket. So you can see there's one bolt that goes into this sort of frame tube thing here and another one that goes into the cross member with the power steering stuff under it. And for now, this is all just gonna hang around, but here's the high voltage power input. And over here, there's a four wire connector for 12 volt input and CAN bus control.
Here we have the stock accelerator pedal and the new electronic accelerator pedal. So this, you can see that bracket there, it mounts with the steering column like right here. It has to sort of bend around it with the arm. Um, obviously the new pedal doesn't really do that to the same degree. So we've fabricated this bracket here that holds it at just the right offset to make that happen. Uh, it also adapts the bolt pattern from the new style to the to the one that came with the car. Here's the accelerator bolted in in its proper location. It's not exactly identical to the stock position, but it's very, very close. And the seat's just kind of been set in place so I can sit in it. and verify that, yeah, it feels all right. This is a pretty good spot for it. Not all that different from my uh, daily driver. And of course, easy to move over to the brake, which there's a bit of a hole there where the clutch would go, but we don't need that anymore. Uh, one thing I might want to do is build a stop for the accelerator pedal since it's on a weird bracket and if you mash down too hard that might do some bad things to that, but it's pretty robust, so it's not a high priority at all. Correct me if I've shown this before, but here's the modified instrument cluster, center instrument cluster. Um, you'll notice that it's got a slightly different tachometer setup. Since there's only one ratio in the gearbox, it doesn't really make sense to have an instrument that reads out what the motor RPM is, because it's always just your speed times some constant factor. So instead I've gone and replaced that. Uh, I had someone make some custom face plates for me and this one instead has how many kilowatts you are either putting into or taking out of the batteries. Um, so it's got minus 75, which is a little more than the maximum brake regen amount and 350, which is a little more than the maximum motor output amount, as well as a slightly modified fuel gauge that indicates the same thing, except now it's got a little battery icon and the usual speedometer. This isn't really active right now because I haven't fabricated the circuit board for it to make it talk to the CAN bus stuff. And that's not something I'm going to do for the next set of tests. But it's nice to have those nice face plates in there. Of course, with the seat installed, here's where I sit. You can see the batteries behind me. And here's the switch for manually turning things on and off. It doesn't actually do anything right now because all the bus bars are removed for safety. Um, other than other than that, the car appears to be, or when it's finished, it'll appear to be pretty stock driver-wise. The main difference will be down here in the center console. Instead of an actual five-speed shifter, there will just be some buttons for forward, neutral, reverse, as well as a electronic parking brake instead of the standard lever sort of type.
Another detail is that the stock fuse box and window washer reservoir have been mounted. Um, originally these were located elsewhere, but the but the windshield washer reservoir was displaced by the AC pump and the fuse box has just been rotated around a bit because of the battery mounting. So that actually goes through a hole that's been drilled down here in front of the front fender. Um, it might need a little more protection or something, I'm not sure yet, but for now that seems to fit really well there. Gives a great access spot for the fill neck. All right, so after a few hours of consulting diagrams and picking apart wires and stuff, we've pulled out some more of the factory electrics. So up here is the engine wiring harness. That was previously extracted, uh, but what we've done with it today is just find some circuits that we do need in here and deep in the connectors of the stuff we don't need so that way we can extract it from the rest, which are these three. Here we have wiring for the wiper motor and the windshield washer pump. This connector runs the inspection light, which is the one that lights up the engine bay. And this wire here is the washer fluid low level sensor and that just controls the light on the dash. We've also extracted some of the AC stuff. So there's the AC compressor lock controller, AC relay box that just runs the AC condenser fan and the magnetic clutch, and then the magnetic clutch connector, as well as the radiator coolant fluid level sensor, which I don't have anymore, so I just pulled that out as well. And we did a little more tracing to figure out kind of what these do to make sure we don't need any of them and we don't so they're now going to sit in a box for a while until we realize that we missed something they didn't change a whole lot in the engine bay except that this space here is now lacking that relay box um and there's a few less connectors dangling down on the ground it's a sunday afternoon though so i'm going to stop here and get editing this video and i'll see you in the next one